What is up, my friends? Today, we're going to be talking about predicting the products of a dehydration reaction. When you see the word dehydration, you should think about taking the water out of something. When you're dehydrated, you're short on water. And that's, in fact, exactly, exactly what we're going to do. We're going to talk about removing a water from an alcohol. So here we got an alcohol. It's got an OH group. And then there's also hydrogens hanging around on the other carbons. And what we're going to do, we'll see in just a minute here, is we'll remove the OH and an H to make water. And that actually is going to leave behind a double bond when we pull off those two atoms. Okay, so it's going to be the removal of an OH and an H and leave us with a double bond. Let's look at a formal definition here. Dehydration reactions. It's the removal of an OH group and an H from an alcohol to form an alkene. Remember that an alkene is just a carbon-carbon molecule with a double bond, right? So it's going to make a double bond. This process requires heat and an acid catalyst. So we're going to heat this up and we're going to do it in the presence of an acid catalyst. The short version is it removes an OH and an H adds a double bond. Okay, this is basically the opposite of a hydration reaction uh, with one small wrinkle that we'll take a look at in a second. So let's go ahead and run this dehydration reaction and look at what the products are. The hydrogens that are going to get removed are always from what we call the beta carbons. So remember that the alpha carbon is the one that the OH is attached to right there. And then our beta carbons are right here and here. So we're always going to take one of those hydrogens from a beta carbon. And we're going to just go ahead and choose one randomly here. It doesn't matter which one we choose in this case. In a second, we'll look at a situation where it does matter which one we choose. So we'll just take off this H and this OH. When we do that, we'll get out water. So water is always one of our products. And then we'll get out our same alkane. And now, where we had an OH and an H, we get a double bond between those two. right? So we've basically just removed those two and added a double bond, like we said. Let's erase all this noise. That is a summary of our dehydration reactions. Now, in this case, it actually doesn't matter which one of those hydrogens we removed. Uh, you would get the same product. Um, you can go through the details if you want of that. But the point is, is it would for sure be the same product. Now, in this case here, we have an alcohol where actually, depending on which hydrogen we remove, we remove, we'll get a different product. So let's think about it. Here is our alpha carbon. And our beta carbons are right there and right there. And our beta carbon is right there and right there. So if we remove a hydrogen on the left, then what we'll get is that, okay? If we instead remove a hydrogen from the right, we'll get a different compound. We'll get that double bond in the middle of our molecule like that. Which one of these happens? Well, it turns out here, just like in the case of hydration reactions, we have a rule. And it tells us that we always take the hydrogen from the carbon with less hydrogen. It's called Zaitsev's rule. So it's like Markovnikov's rule, almost in reverse, right? Markovnikov's rules told us that the, the rich get richer. Here we're told the poor get poorer. Okay, let's think about what that means in more detail. When we count the hydrogens on our beta carbons, we see that we have three on the left and two on the right. Okay, hopefully we're good at counting hydrogens at this point. But we always want our total bonds to add up to four. So we have three on the left and two on the right. So which side has fewer? Well, in fact, the right-hand side has fewer. It just has two. And that's actually where we're going to take the hydrogen from. And so what that means is when we take one of these hydrogens and this OH, we're going to be left with a double bond between those two. And so this is actually the correct product. And this one doesn't really happen. Now, it, with Zaitsev's rule, it turns out both of those actually occur. And we just get a major product and a minor product. So most of our products are going to be this guy. And occasionally we'll get what we see up top if we actually run this reaction in the lab. But for the purposes of this video, we're always going to be predicting the major product. So remember for Zaitsev's rule, we're told that the poor get poorer. And we remove a hydrogen from the carbon with less hydrogen. Let's practice this. All right, here's two practice problems. Let's start with the one up top. It's really similar to what we saw before. We're just going to redraw the structure. That's basically like our first step. And we'll have our OH here for a second. And then we should count the hydrogens on each beta carbon. Okay, so our alpha carbon is again here, and our beta carbon is going to be right here and right here. So we have two or three hydrogens here on the end and two hydrogens right here in the middle. Okay, and again, that's just because we want all of our bonds to add up to four. So which one has fewer? Well, the one on the right. And so that means we're going to remove one from one right here on the right-hand side. And so we'll get rid of one of those. 
and we'll get rid of our OH, and that's going to form the double bond in that middle of the molecule. What you'll see with dehydration reactions is we typically get our double bond there in the middle of the molecule if we have a choice, because that's going to be the side uh, that includes the beta carbon with fewer hydrogen. Okay, now let's look at this second molecule here on the bottom. We're going to once again just redraw our structure. So we have ourselves a five-membered carbon ring, and it has an OH group on it. And once again, we have our alpha carbon, and then our beta carbons are above and below. In this case, we're going to have two hydrogens up top and two hydrogens on the bottom. So it doesn't matter which side you choose. And in fact, regardless of which side you choose, you would get the same exact product. You're going to be getting a cyclopentene. And that's just the same, whether I choose the top double bond or the bottom double bond, because if I rotate the molecule, you'd see that there's no difference. So we just need to remove the OH and one of those hydrogens. We can choose either one since there's a tie, and we'll get a double bond, let's say, right there. And our OH goes away. Notice that if instead I put the double bond, not there, but down here, looks a little different, but if I just rotate that molecule just by uh, one-fifth of a turn, you'll see it's the exact same molecule. Okay, let's do two more practice problems. Okay, here we have an OH on a substituted alcohol. So by that I mean, hey, there's this methyl group hanging out here. And we'll see that that can sometimes change things. Okay, so let's go ahead and redraw the structure. Here's our methyl group and here's our OH. Once again, we have our alpha carbon right on that OH. And we have a beta carbon here and a beta carbon here. So beta carbons are always one carbon away from that alpha carbon. Now notice this guy on the left here has one, two, three bonds. So it actually just has one hydrogen. So that guy has one hydrogen. And the one on the end has three hydrogens. So once again, the pore get poor. So we're going to take it from that one hydrogen side. And that means the double bond is going to form again on the interior, as we see is commonly the case. So we'll get rid of that H and this OH. And that forms a double bond right here. Of course, this was just our annotation about how many hydrogens were there. And that's going to be our alkene. Okay, last example here. We once again have an alcohol that has some substituents on it. Let's see if it changes anything. You might recall that this would be a tertiary alcohol where you see that sort of cross shape. And we're going to go ahead and take a look at our alpha carbons. Here's the deal. Our alpha carbon remains in the same exact spot right on the OH, but now we actually have one, two, three beta carbons, three carbons connected to it, okay? And we'll count the hydrogens that we have on each of them. On the end here, we have three hydrogens. On this bottom side, we also have three hydrogens. And on the right-hand side, we have two hydrogens. Okay, so which side is the poorest? Well, the one with two hydrogens, so that's the one that's gonna lose a hydrogen. We'll get rid of that, we'll get rid of the OH, and we'll add a double bond. Okay, so that guy, once again, gives us our double bond on the interior. So you can see that's kind of a pattern there. Okay, so this is dehydration reactions, where we take an alcohol and we make an alkene by removing an OH and an H. We always follow Zaitsev's rule, which tells us that the poor get poor.